Suppose a context-free grammar is in Chomsky normal form. Remember, that means that every production rule either replaces a variable with two variables or replaces a variable with a terminal. Then every node of the derivative tree for any string gamma will either split into two variables or produce one terminal. Consequently, the growth rate of the derivative tree is limited. And in particular, this means that the derivative tree for a context-free grammar in Chomsky normal form is a binary tree. To proceed, we'll introduce a few terms. So given a node and one of its descendants, the path consists of the two nodes and all the nodes between. The length of the path is the number of nodes it contains, and the height of the tree is the length of its longest path. So, for example, in the derivative tree shown, let's find the path between S to D, between the two Bs, and between the two As, and then find the height of the tree. So note that the path from S to D is... And so it has length 4. The path between the two Bs is... So it has length 3. The path between the two A's is non-existent. So remember, paths only exist between a node and one of its descendants. So obviously the path of greatest length must start at S. And if you know it, you can use Dijkstra's algorithm. If you don't know it, you can use Dijkstra's algorithm, start at S, and expand outward. So from S, the path to A and B has length 2, to C and D has length 3, to A, B, and D has length 4, and to B and C has length 5, so the height of the tree is 5. Now, remember that if a context-free grammar has no lambda productions and no unit productions, then a string of length n can be produced in at most 2n-1 steps. But if the context-free grammar is in Chomsky normal form, the derivative tree has a specific form, and this allows us to find bounds on the height of the derivative tree. If the binary tree has height k, there will be at most 2 to k minus 1 terminal nodes. So if a CFG is in Chomsky normal form, a derivative tree of height k will produce at most 2 to the power k minus 1 terminals. Or will it? Since the CFG is in Chomsky normal form, the only way to produce a terminal symbol is directly from a variable. So the last node is always going to be an only child. In some sense, it's a wasted step. So the derivative tree of height k can produce at most 2 to the power k minus 2 terminal symbols. What about a lower bound on the number of symbols? Since every variable eventually produces a terminal symbol, we want a tree of height k with the fewest possible terminal symbols. Let's experiment. Since the last branch of a derivative tree for a grammar in Chomsky normal form must have the form a produces a terminal, then the only possibility for height k equals 2 tree is s produces a. For height at k equals 3 tree, the first prediction rule must be s produces a, b. Then each of these must produce a terminal symbol. The height k equals 4 tree would begin with the production rule s produces a, b. Since we want to introduce as few variables as possible, since they ultimately produce terminals, we should use the production rule a produces terminal. But to make the tree have height k equals 4, we need b produces cd, 
and both of these must produce terminal symbols. And so we found that if the tree has height k equals 2, the shortest string it can produce has length 1. If the tree has height k equals 3, the shortest string it can produce has length 2. If the tree has height k equals 4, the shortest string it can produce has length 3. And this suggests that if the tree has height k, the shortest string it can produce has length k minus 1. Let's prove it. Or let's leave that as a homework problem. And so this leads to some important bounds on our context-free grammar. So suppose our grammar is in Chomsky normal form. What are the shortest and longest strings that can be produced by a height 5 derivative tree? So the shortest string that can be produced has length 5 minus 1, or 4, and this would occur if one variable of every production was immediately replaced by a terminal. So we might have S produces A, B, and then A will be replaced by a terminal. B splits into two variables, one of which is replaced by a terminal. The other splits into two variables, which are both replaced by terminals because our derivative tree should have height 5. And so the shortest string we can produce has length 4. Meanwhile, the longest string would have length 2 to the power 5 minus 2, that's 2 to the third or 8. And this would happen if no variables were replaced until the end. So S splits into two variables, and each splits into two variables, and so on, until we get to the end, where all of our variables get replaced with terminal symbols. Or, for example, suppose a context-free grammar in Chomsky normal form produces a string of length 11. Let's find the shortest and tallest possible derivative trees for such a string. So, remember, a derivative tree of height k must produce a string of length at least k minus 1, but no longer than 2 to the power k minus 2. And it might not be obvious how to use the formulas, so let's uh, try something and see what happens. So suppose our derivative tree has height, oh, I don't know, how about 5, since we just did that. Then the shortest string it can produce has length 4, and the longest string it can produce has length 8. But since the string we're trying to produce has length 11, a height 5 tree can't produce it. So, if our tree has height 6, then the shortest string it can produce has length 5, and the longest string it can produce has length 16. So, this is the shortest tree that could produce a string of length 11. Now, as the height grows, so does the length of the shortest string that could be produced. So, we can focus on the shortest string. And so, we see that if the derivative tree has height 12, the shortest string it can produce has length 11, so it can barely produce our string. 